Hello, my dear students. I hope you have been doing great. Today we are discussing about the adjusting entries. Adjusting entries are the entries which are recorded at the end of the accounting period for the revenues and expenses which can have effect over more than one accounting period. Uh, here we have to understand that more than one accounting period concept. Because we record all our revenues, day-to-day -day revenues and expenses into journal journal. But there are certain revenues and expenses transactions which can have effect over more than one accounting period. Uh, just uh, like taking example of the expenses of salary expense. Suppose I'm a teacher, I receive salary from my university. So uh, it's a month of June. So when um, uh, there's 30th June, it means I have, you know, uh, earned my salary. So that salary I can record as a revenue into my books of accounts. So, but I have not received that salary. So I can record that salary as a salary revenue receivable from my university. Similarly, university can record that uh, salary as an expense into books of accounts by the end of the month on 30th June. They will record that as a salary expense and salary payable to uh, teachers by the end of the month. So in that way, uh, that salary is revenue for me and an expense for the university. So that's how these expenses and revenues can have effect over more than one accounting period. There are many more examples uh, that we will discuss gradually when we, when we will discuss in detail about each type of these adjusting entries. Basically, we pass these adjusting entries following the accrual system of the accounting. So accrual system of accounting is the uh, system of accounting in which transactions are to be recorded, all transactions uh, into books of accounts when these are incurred. Either uh, we have received cash or not, either paid cash or not. Another system is cash system of accounting in which all transactions are to be recorded into books of accounts uh, whenever cash is received or paid. But usually we follow the accrual system of accounts. Um, uh, this is more effective system of accounting. So uh, we pass these adjusting entries following the accrual system of the accounting. Further, there are two uh, most famous GAAP principle. GAAP is an acronym that stands for Generally Accepted Accounting Principle. We, we pass these adjusting entries following these two GAAP principles. One is realization principle, and other is matching principle. Realization principle says that revenues are recognized and recorded into books of accounts when these revenues are earned. By earned revenue, we means that whenever an organization or company uh, sells goods or provides services to the customers, it means they have earned that revenue. Either they have received amount of that revenue or not, but they can record that revenue into books of accounts. So they will record that revenue as a revenue receivable from that specific uh, customer. This is a realization principle. Another uh, principle is matching principle. Matching principle says that Expenses of uh, any period are to be compared with the revenues of that same specific period uh, to determine the true profitability position of the business. We cannot compare the expenses of June with the revenues of July or the revenues of uh, June with the expenses of the July. If we are doing that, we won't be able to determine true profitability position of the business. So these are the uh, some, you know, uh, basic basic assumptions, principles behind recording adjusting entries. We are, if we are not following that, we won't be able to determine the true position of the business. Uh, further, there are four types of adjusting entries uh, that we will discuss in detail. The first one is apportioning recorded cost. Second one is apportioning unearned revenue. Third, to record the unrecorded costs or unrecorded expenses. To record the unrecorded uh, revenue. So today we will discuss the first adjusting, uh, that is apportioning recorded cost adjusting entry into detail. Apportioning recorded cost adjusting entry means apportioning means sharing out or allocating the cost of an asset to expenses. There are certain, you know, assets uh, which are recorded into books of accounts, uh, which uh, with the passage of the time, these assets are expired and these are recorded as expenses into books of accounts. Uh, just like unexpired insurance, unexpired rent or rent prepaid, or certain tangible fixed assets just like building, machinery, office equipment. With the passage of time, some cost of these assets is expired by wear and tear or by usage. So we have to, you know, 
allocate that cost and the expense into books of accounts. For, so for all these uh, type of assets, we allocate these assets into expense at the end of the accounting period. If we are not doing that, we won't be able again to determine true profitability position of the business. Say suppose uh, you have paid uh, rent of one year in advance, uh, say suppose 10,000 uh, rupees. Now, this is month of the June. You have paid that rent on 1st of the June for one year. Now when June ends, by at the end of that month of the June, you have to record that unexpired rent in, as an expired rent for the month of the June. So uh, further we will discuss in detail about that adjusting entry uh, through transaction examples and uh, how these uh, are recorded into adjusting entries journal journal and how further they have effect over the ledger uh, adjusted trial balance and financial statements. Dear students, today we are discussing about apportioning the recorded cost adjusting entry. Basically, there are four types of adjusting entries. Entries to apportion the recorded cost is, entries to apportion unearned revenue, entries to record the unrecorded expenses or accrued expenses, entries to record the unrecorded revenues or accrued income. So let's discuss in detail about the first adjusting entry increased to apportion the recorded cost. Basically, these entries are passed to allocate a portion of an asset account to expense which has been used in the current accounting period. It is done by debiting the expense account and crediting the asset account or contra asset account. The meaning of contra is opposite. Contra asset means opposite to that respective asset account. You will see further in uh, detail in the upcoming examples. These entries are passed for prepaid expenses just like unexpired insurance, unexpired rent or office supplies. Further, these entries are also passed for depreciation of tangible fixed assets just like building, machinery, office equipment, office furniture, fixed fixture, etc. Please keep in mind depreciation is not charged on land because land does not lose its value with the passage of the time by wear and tear just like by usage just like other tangible fixed assets, building, machinery or office equipment. So let's discuss in detail first example of uh, prepaid expenses of prepaid or unexpired insurance. Assume that on November 1, Roberts Real Estate Company paid 600 for one year fire insurance policy in advance. So on November 1, the entry is recorded as under in the journal. Please keep in mind that this is not adjusting entry. This is routine uh, transaction which is recorded in journal journal. So on November, we will pass that entry uh, uh, by debiting unexpired insurance 600 and by crediting cash. 600. The explanation will be purchased one year fire insurance policy. Now at the end of the month of November, adjusting entry is supposed to be paused for the uh, part of unexpired insurance expired. Roberts real estate company closes its accounts at the end of every month. So as one month passes at the end of the November, so amount of unexpired insurance expired in one month. Uh, is supposed to be recorded. So insurance expired for one month will be 50. How? 600 divided by 12, the resulting will be uh, value will be 50. So adjusting entry passed at the end of the November will be as under. Insurance expense debit 50, unexpired insurance credit 50. To record the insurance expired for month of the November. So another example is for office supplies. On November 2, Roberts Real Estate Company purchased office supplies such as stationery to last for several months of 720. So again, we will pass that routine entry uh, uh, transaction into journal journal office supplies as it is a set. So it is debited 720. And we have paid cash for that office supply, so 720 will be credited. 
Now at the end of the month of November, we will pass adjusting entry for the part of office supplies expired. Suppose office manager estimated that supplies costing about 500 were still in hand. It means out of 720, 500 are in hand. It means supplies costing 220 has been expired in the month of the November. So we have to record that uh, supplies expired in the month of the November in adjusting entries journal journal. So we will pass adjusting entry. Uh, by debiting office supplies expense account and the office supplies account is credited for the amount of supplies reduced. So office supplies expense debit 220, office supplies account credit 220. The explanation of that adjusting entry will be to record the consumption of supplies in the month of November. Now let's discuss in detail example of depreciation of tangible fixed assets. I'll first let's discuss a theoretical concept of depreciation. It can be defined as allocating the cost of tangible fixed asset to the expense in each period of its useful life. Whenever a tangible fixed asset is acquired, its useful life is estimated in every accounting period, an estimated portion of the total cost of asset is charged as depreciation expense to reduce the cost of tangible fixed asset gradually. So let's discuss uh, how depreciation is charged in detail with an example. Suppose Roberts Real Estate Company purchased a building of cost 36,000 and it is estimated to have useful life of 20 years. 20 years 20 multiplied by 12, you can also say its total estimated life is 240 months. So by using a straight line method, we can calculate depreciation for month of the November. You can calculate by uh, dividing 36,000 the cost of the building by its estimated useful life, which is 240 months. So for depreciation expense for the month of November will be 150. Further, you can also calculate as Dividing the 36,000 by its estimated useful life, which is 20, 36,000 divided by 20. Then the resulting value is again divided by 12 to get the one month depreciation expense. Again, uh, the resulting value depreciation expense will be 150. So adjusting entry for depreciation is passed by debiting depreciation expense account and crediting accumulated depreciation building account. Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account, contra to that asset here in our example, building. So that is passed against that uh, building account in records. So and this is shown as deduction from original cost of the asset in the balance sheet to find out the book value of the asset. The adjusting entry for depreciation is passed as following depreciation expense debit 150 accumulated depreciation building credited 150 the explanation will be to record the depreciation expense for month of november so that's all for uh, uh, the adjusting entry uh, apportioning recorded cost further you can again charge depreciation for next month of december same way in this this way we will continuously charge depreciation expense for each accounting period until the total cost of the that respective uh, asset just like building is expired. So that's all for today. Thank you.